Hey, welcome back everybody. This is Jeff Frick with theCUBE. We are on the ground at the San Jose Convention Center at Quick, Quick Books Connect 2015. The second year they've had the show, 5,000 people are here learning about QuickBooks, the developer community, the accountant community, really trying to build that community um, kind of connection between those groups to accelerate kind of new applications, et cetera. So we're really excited. Steve King, a partner at Emergent Research, Welcome, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, thanks for having me. So uh, so you said you were here last year. I was. What's kind of the vibe on the show compared to last year, this year? Because it's only the second year. More, more people, more excitement. Um, it was big last year too, but it's even bigger this year. In fact, I had a real hard time parking this morning, and I had to park <laughs> quite a ways away. That's and, a good sign. And last year I was able to park right here at the convention center. So you, you're all about um, independent workers, and kind of this new way mm -hmm. of, of working. So, you know, there's a lot of people who do 1099s, you've got to kind of be a sophisticated independent contractor, you've got to be able to go job to job, right? The days of getting a job at GM, staying there for 30 years and retiring, and go watch, not so much anymore. Yeah, we, we do a study and we think there's about 30 million Americans that on a regular basis, meaning in an average work week, work as freelancers or independent consultants, independent contractors. Other folks, uh, the Freelancers Union and Upwork did a study saying 54 million Americans in total. Those include some people that just do it occasionally. But however you do it, it's somewhere between 30 and 40 percent of the economy now, though the workforce is doing at least some part-time independent work. And how much of those people are doing it by choice? versus finding necessity? We find in our studies, and we do a number of surveys on this, we find about 60% it's choice, 55 to 60%. There's about 25 to 30% that are doing it purely by necessity, and then the people in between are kind of a mix. Right. Um, but it's, it's really interesting. Most people are doing it by choice. Okay. And, and they're doing it because they're looking for autonomy, control, and flexibility. And those things are hard to come by in a traditional job. Right. And in exchange, they're um, dealing with insecurity, lack of benefits, unpredictable income. So there's a clear trade-off. We call that the yin and yang of independent work. Right, and there's always the other thing too when you're, when you're an independent contractor, and, and, and many of us have been there at some point in time, right? It's, it's this whole kind of sales process in motion versus delivery. Yes. You, know, you, you gotta be working on your next deal, you gotta be out in, in the community in which you're serving, mm -hmm. working on those next deals, and then, oh by the way, you got a deal, now you actually got to deliver, and if it's too big of a deal, you got too many customers, it kind of takes you out of the sales motion. So what do you see kind of best practices for people balancing that? The people that, that do it best now don't go it alone anymore. You use partners, you use other virtual workers, um, other independent contractors, whether it's through online marketplaces like an Elance, or whether it's just people that you know. My own business is that way. I'm a husband and wife, two-person firm, we have no employees, but at any point in time, we have six to eight people working on our, our stuff. Right. And so that gives us the ability to continue to deliver, while also making sure that we have something coming out into the future. Yeah. Um, and it's not just selling, it's also someone has to do the books, someone has to make sure the computers run. I mean, you, you do have to be a jack of all trades, and it's not for everybody. Right. And, we're, and we're at we're here at, at, at the QuickBooks show, and, and obviously keeping track of the money is, is uh, a Big lot party. more complicated mm -hmm. if you're running your own show. You don't just get the paycheck and, and it's automatic deductions go where they're supposed to do. You do a quick 1040 easy right. and you're finished. Well, and particularly now when you're talking about these independent workers, they tend to have multiple streams of income, multiple gigs, and so they might be driving for Uber, teaching dance, um, and, a, and, a, and, and be a graphic designer all at the same time. And so sort of pulling all that information in and doing your taxes is incredibly difficult. And that's why QuickBooks has developed, uh, why Intuit's developed QuickBooks for the self-employed, to allow them to, to manage that tax process. And, and do you see kind of the, the trend, the macro trend, kind of continue in this way, where there'll be more and more uh, independent workers kind of assembling around a particular job or assembling around types of work as opposed to, again, kind of the old school, get a job at GE and work there forever? Absolutely. Two things are going on. On the demand side, more and more corporations are choosing to hire more what they call contingent workers which are independent workers that are not traditional full-time employees. They're doing that primarily now for agility and flexibility. They want to be able to scale up and scale down their staffing levels as they need. There's also a cost savings component, but that doesn't come through as much as it did, say, 10 years ago. So companies are using more. At the same time, it's what I talked about before. People are looking for more flexibility. They're looking for more autonomy. They're looking for more control. So we have a flow of people that are saying, I no longer really want to be a traditional employee. 
So both on the supply and demand side, it's growing. It's growing. And it'll continue to grow across the economy. Now there's there's kind of three groups of workers that, that are the focus of this show. There's there's the kind of the traditional small business, um, which into it's very involved in. There's the accountants that we just learned a little bit about uh, from Jim, and then there's developers. Um, you're here. You're kind of speaking to the developers. Kind of what are some of the special characteristics that developers have to think about um, in their kind of autonomous work life? It's, in, it's interesting. The developers have to come up with products that their customers are going to buy and want. And so the biggest thing is, is creating a product that has a big enough market that you can develop a survivable and sustainable small business. And so that's the biggest thing. Um, the second thing is, something we were talking about before we started filming, was what platforms do you attach yourself to? Do I build my products on top of the QuickBooks platform? Do I build it on top of the Google platform or maybe Facebook? And so that platform decision is also important. And so developers have a very complicated world right now, and they have to pick their platform and pick their target market in a way where they're more likely to end up being successful. It's a difficult task. And where do you see, what are some of the factors that you see that kind of influence that decision for a particular developer in terms of your experience working with them? Certainly their background and their personal experience and their expertise. And so a lot of developers are going vertical market. They understand the insurance industry, so I'm going to develop an app for the insurance industry. Or they understand agriculture and they do an ag app. And so having an expertise where you can really get in there and understand the need, understand the customers, and develop something that those customers will need on a regular basis, that's the, that's really the key part of this whole app development. Right. Build something that people need, support it really well. I saw his joke, is it, you know, it's the, uh, it's kind of the, if I only had a, that, you know, and build, build right. that, right? Because you know it, you wish you had it, there's other people in that same industry, mm -hmm. that same position, chances are they maybe need that thing too. Absolutely. Absolutely. And a lot of apps get built that way. Out of someone having a passion or a need for themselves, and they're saying, gosh, and then other people other people will need this. That's how a lot of it happens. I was I was just on a panel with the CEO of Expensify, and that's how he started that business. He said, I hated expense reports. I built an app for me to, to, to do my expense report. And then um, I realized other people want it too, and now he has a very successful business. Yeah, much better than just building a widget just for fun Absolutely. or because it's technologically cool or you think maybe somebody might want it and you know, they're now trying to find a market. For Solve it. a problem. Solve a real problem. So I give you the last word. What's your advice, best practices for people maybe just starting to venture into kind of an independent contractor world or you know, kind of self-employed? What would you tell them? Um, kind of things that, you know, pitfalls to avoid sure. and, and things to really concentrate In terms on. of going out on your own and becoming an independent contractor self-employed, the first thing is, if possible, do it part-time to start. Um, don't give up on your day job. Uh, you, and build up a little bit of a financial cushion before you get going because it's unpredictable, the income's up and down. Um, develop a few customers because that will be important also. So try to stick with your day job as long as you can before you drop that off. The second level is you have to show up for work every day. There's all this talk about working in your pajamas or working naked. Uh, treat it like a real job. Show up every day, get your work done, be organized. Um, in a lot of cases, it helps if you get yourself into a situation where you're working with others. Um, develop relationships with other people because if you try to go it alone, it's going to be really hard. Those are really the first keys. And then, of course, make sure you have a skill that's marketable. Right. Don't go on your own unless you have something that people want. Again, solve problems. Well, Steve, thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day to, uh, to share your Great. insight with us. Thank really you. Really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Absolutely. I'm Jeff Frick. We're at Intuit uh, QuickBooks Event 2015, 5,000 people, San Jose Convention Center. Thanks for watching.